Welcome back everybody. We're going to try out something a little bit different today because I have the MXR bass compressor and I'm not a bass player so I'm going to try it out on guitar. This pedal actually belongs to Ryan, the singer and bass player from Ragdoll and well I've got his bass here and this was in his bass bag so I'm just going to say that Ryan is letting me borrow this video for today so uh, thanks for that man. Let's try it on guitar. I'm pretty curious. MXR basically put this pedal out. It said bass compressor on it. A bunch of guitar players tried it and really liked it and so they put it back out as the studio compressor. They also just make the bass compressor. Apparently they're exactly the same thing apart from the fact that this is in a white enclosure and it says bass compressor. The other one has a different paint job and it says studio compressor. So let's try it out. Let's get started. I'm breaking the unspoken rule and I'm not using a guitar with single coils for this particular clean sound. This is my 2002 Les Paul Standard. It has some pickups by Martin A. Smith, handmade here in Perth. This is what the bridge pickup sounds like. And the neck pickup. However, the middle position has the two pickups out of phase, so you have a big volume drop. We'll get into this in a second. So one application of using a compressor with these sort of controls is you can push the input. I've left everything else basically at noon with the ratio on its lowest setting and you can use this to just kind of equalize the volume either between something like this out of phase mode on a Les Paul if you've got it set up like that or if you've got a Strat with say a neck and middle single coil but a bridge humbucker and the bridge humbucker is a little bit louder than the other pickups you can do this. So we go from this tone. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And then if I turn it off and go to the bridge pickup, the volumes are a little more equalized now. It almost gives you like a faux Telecaster kind of sound. Alrighty, let's roll on to the neck pickup because I want to show off some of the kind of functions that you've got in here. The attack and release controls basically work backwards. So I shouldn't say they work backwards, but when you have the attack this way, you have a longer attack time. And when you have it cranked up, you have a shorter attack time. So I'll just kind of level out these guys here, and then I'll bring the attack back from a really, really fast attack to a slower attack. <laughs> same thing with the release. If we try out the two extremes, release all the way kind of, what is that, counterclockwise? I was going to say to the left, but it's going in a circle. Uh, so we've got it counterclockwise, which means the release is going to be really long and then a really fast attack. You get, I guess, more of that kind of classic funk compressor thing where it just squishes everything. <laughs> Pretty easy to set up and you're basically just using the input uh, to compensate for how hot or how not hot your pickups are. So if you were using something with low output pickups, you would have to pull this up and vice versa. So let's crank the ratio all the way up. This is going to give us more of that kind of hard limiting sound.
pretty extreme. Let's click it down one more. Down to eight. And then these settings on four, let's uh, go a little less insane with the release and I'll pull the attack back a little bit. This is basically just gonna give you a really nice kind of fat boost. And I would say most guitar players would want this particular sound out of this pedal. <laughs> Let's just flip flop those attack and release settings just for fun to have a listen to what they do. So with those kind of settings, when you turn attack down, so it's getting longer, it's kind of going to let more of your original guitar signal in, which we're kind of, uh, I guess, boosting two ways by bringing the input up and the output. So that's a little bit more of a classic kind of comp boost. And I mean, if you bring the release slower as well, it's basically going to hold that. <laughs> So it's not really transparent at those settings, but I like it. It's got a lot of character. I'm just gonna switch over to a dirty sound and we're gonna use this as a boost in front of the dirty amp. It's a really fun way to use it. All right, I'll leave the settings the same, bypass, and then I'm gonna kick it in. Then I will probably bring the output control up to drive the amp even harder. <laughs> So that can be pretty fun as well, basically to just use as a sustainer. Let's uh, let's turn the attack and the release down a little bit there. We'll turn them counterclockwise, I should say, because uh, really it's increasing both the release and the attack time. Crank the output. I might bring the input up a little bit more and I'll just kind of use this for some sustain for a lead boost. So without, and then I'll kick it in for some single notes. <laughs> I can of course use it the other way around as well. I could use it to bring the output down in front of a dirtier amp and uh, just use this, I guess, as you kind of like clean up control or something like that. So let's just try that. Here's the sound without. <laughs> And then I'll kick it in and basically, maybe I'll leave the input where it was because I want to set all the detectors the same, but I'll just kind of back the output off and I've got this cranked all the way up ratio wise. <laughs>
So this thing, I think my favorite setting on it anyway, and I would say a lot of the people watching would just be that kind of classic, like semi not so transparent boost where you've got the low ratio, uh, you know, you maybe go for a slightly longer attack and a longer release on everything. And then you just compensate for everything by cranking the output up on there. Uh, it is obviously going to be really cool as well on that mode that I've got on here with the out of phase positions because I can bring the input up to compensate for it and crank the output. So I could go from uh, like no compressor. Then I could switch over to the middle position and kick the comp in as a boost and to even everything out. That's actually a really addictive tone. It doesn't really sound like a Les Paul anymore. So that's the MXR bass compressor on guitar. It's no surprise that they basically put this in a different box and called it the studio compressor for guitar players. But uh, you know, if you can find one that says bass compressor on it and it's cheaper than the studio compressor, go for it because apparently it's exactly the same thing and it sounds really good. I will play you all out on the sound I've got at the moment, the crunchy amp with the out of phase position on these pickups. I'll uh, leave the compressor off for a second when you hear that it's a bit anemic and then I'll use it as its big kind of fattening, smoothening, if smoothening even is a word or a phrase, it is now. Check it out. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to support the channel, there are links to my music and my Patreon in the video description. And a big thank you to Ryan for letting me borrow his bass compressor. And uh, this is what it sounds like on guitar. Again. Hey.